Hello, interwebs. This is Blogging411. Today we are going to talk about virtual assistants. A lot of bloggers think they need a virtual assistant, but then they think, I can't afford one, or I don't know what I would really do with one, or no, it'll just get too confusing. So we're here to answer all of your questions about virtual assistants. My name is Allison Carter. I'm co-founder of the North Carolina Blogger Network. We've been doing Blogging411 for a while. We're happy to come back after a hiatus. And we have a little shake up this time. We are starting 2015 with a brand new co host. I will let Tiffany introduce herself right now. Hi, everybody. This is Mrs. T from Mrs. T Love Life Laughter, and I'm actually one of the regional ambassadors for um, the NC Blogger Network. And I'm so excited to co host with Allison today, and I can't wait to find out more about what a virtual assistant is and how it can work for me and even you. Absolutely. We're going to jump in in just a second. But of course, Tiffany and I are representing the Blogger Network, but we are not virtual assistants. And we thought, oh my gosh, how can we talk about virtual assistants when we don't really know anything about virtual assistants? So I got the North Carolina Blogger Network virtual assistant, Sarah, to come be on our show. And I'm going to let Sarah introduce herself now. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah, and as Allison said, the NC Blogger Network's virtual assistant. Um, I have my own virtual assistant company, so I, run, I work for a few different clients. I also have my own blog, Joyfully Organized, which is a fairly um, basic lifestyle blog. Yes, it's beautiful, and it is joyful, and it is organized, so it is both of those things. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump in right away, and I want to start with the very basic question of what can a virtual assistant do for you? I know as a blogger, um, we spend so much time working on our content and trying to come up with really good blog topics and things that fit in our voice, and our blogs are actually branded towards who we are and what we do, and we spend a lot of time marketing our blog blog as us. So Sarah, can you kind of tell us, a virtual assistant can't come in and be who we are, right? Like, you know, you can't be me, but how can you help me be me? Yeah. So for personal bloggers, um, the virtual assistant can help you um, help schedule posts and come up with a content calendar, can help you schedule your social media posts. So when you have a post go out, you normally want to post it on Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus and any of those sites. Your virtual assistant can help schedule those all out for you so that you don't have to worry about it. Um, if you have sponsorships on your blog, um, your virtual assistant can help you advertise those and get new sponsors on your blog. They can help you organize your social media, like at your Pinterest boards. So there's a variety of different things that virtual assistants can do, especially for single bloggers, without taking away their voice. I love that. I love the fact that I know for the Blogger Network, um, we brought Sarah on board just a couple months ago, and it has been a huge difference as far as freeing up my time to actually write the blog post and work on content creation, and Sarah's on the back making sure that all those posts get out there and get scheduled, and that's been huge for us. Um, and I have to say, I highly recommend it. Um, I think that one of the things that we have that's been a learning process for me, because Sarah's the first virtual assistant that I've ever worked with, is how to empower the virtual assistant, right? So I know I have the tendency to kind of just send Sarah a bajillion emails as I'm thinking about things, and that probably isn't the <laughs> best method. So Sarah, can you kind of walk us through, you know, if you were to have a virtual assistant, is it good to send, like, a to-do list, or are there a program? Like, how, how should a blogger manage the relationship with a virtual assistant to make sure they're getting the most out of the relationship? Yeah, it kind of depends who you are. So if you're working with an individual blogger a lot, just email me um, at like the beginning of the week with the things they want me to focus on that week, and then I kind of just go through them daily to make sure they're all getting done. For companies I work with that have blogs, um, for the, since the beginning, there's certain tasks they just want me to do. So if I'm managing their WordPress site, I just make sure all of their plugins are always staying updated. I make sure. I'm managing and their comments and making sure they're getting approved or the spam is going to spam folders. So there's certain things that you can go ahead when you hire a virtual assistant to have them just be like, I want you to always do this. I want to get it off my plate 
or at the beginning of the week you can just send a to-do list or using some kind of share drive whether it's a Dropbox or Google Drive or something that you can communicate with and collaborate on that's some kind of checklist that you can go back and forth. Okay, so my method of emailing you five times a day is probably not the most efficient or effective. But it works. You might need to adjust that a little bit. <laughs> oh, see? This is why we do blogging 411. We all need to learn. Definitely. Um, <laughs> I think that... Um, I think that there are a whole lot of things a virtual assistant can do for you. I know one of the reasons why we felt Sarah was such a good fit for the Blogger Network is because she is a blogger herself, and it kind of helped us in setting our content calendar and doing our social media because we didn't have to have a conversation to explain what we needed with the social media. Sarah was a blogger, so she automatically knew, okay, well, you're going to need to tweet this out three times a day. You're going to need to post this on Facebook plus one engagement post on Facebook. Like, that learning curve was already there, and Sarah already knew that, so she was kind of able to take it and run. Um, Sarah, are there virtual assistants? Do, do all virtual assistants blog, or are there virtual assistants who have different skill sets? I mean, how does that how does that work? Yeah, so I would say the two main categories of virtual assistants are those that work on their own and have their own business, kind of like what I do. But then there's a whole set of them that you can hire through a company online. So there's contract companies online that you can hire. Those virtual assistants in general tend to have a different skill set because they don't tend to be bloggers. So they don't always have that same social media or the blogging knowledge. Um, but in terms of having it on your website, so I actually started mine before I had really had a blog and I was working more for commercial real estate companies just doing their virtual assistant work and then I really got into the blogging and that's kinda how mine changed because I fell in love with it so there are different virtual assistants for different types of companies because I know um, even the commercial real estate company I know they still work with virtual assistants that help do a lot of data entry and those mass emails they send out Hmm. So are you like in their email programs and stuff creating email blasts for them as well? I mean this is like a whole skill set that's I always just think of a virtual assistant as somebody who's going to take the blog post and push it out on social media and schedule stuff like through Buffer or whatever mm -hmm. we're using. Um, but it sounds like your virtual assistant can do much more for you. Don't worry, I'm not going to email you five times a day after this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they can do a lot. So some of the other clients I worked with and I know others have are like salons in the area. So updating, um, they have stylists coming in and out all the time. So updating their profiles on their website or designing their website to, um, like I said, businesses that um, – have those big email blasts they want to send out to um, I've worked for also a bigger name blogger and she has her own um, email like address and so she created me one as well so I could help do I was on the technology side if anyone had questions that is so interesting so say I'm a blogger or a business and I'm thinking about getting a virtual assistant I would assume that it's helpful to kind of sit down and and say these are things that I could pass off like you know these are the tasks that need to happen every week that are taking up a lot of my time that don't oh. require that is that how is that the best way to kind of figure out what you need yeah so if you want to think about either the things that, the way I kind of break it down because I've had bloggers email me before and be like I have kinda wanted to hire someone but I don't know exactly what they do I just know I'm overwhelmed so it could either be something that you don't like doing period and you just want to hand it off. So if you don't like scheduling social media you want to hand it off. Or something that you maybe don't mind doing but you know it's not bringing you either that direct readership or the direct income depending on how you're blogging. So not directly, I don't necessarily agree with like if you're a blogger the virtual assistant interacting with your readers as you. So something else on the back side maybe working with companies to get sponsorships or something like that. Yeah, that is such an interesting point about not letting your virtual assistant pretend to be you or, you know, making that decision for yourself. Um, I know that responding to comments on your blog, regardless of how you're blogging or what you're blogging for, you have to re reply to people who leave comments on your blog, you know, that whole, that whole reward good behavior. <laughs> um, but, you know, that would be really hard because I don't think that as a virtual assistant you could necessarily 
create the voice or the tone or that dialogue with my readers that I want to have if they're replying. But then at the same time, if they're leaving, like if I'm if I blog crazy and I'm getting 50 different comments a day, like that could be tough to keep up with. So that's a really interesting dilemma that that I hadn't really thought of. Of course, yeah. in theory, if you are giving your virtual assistant other things to do, then you could free up your time to comment. Right. And then again, it depends if so. As a just a personal blogger, I would say focus more on your commenting and have other tasks you hand off to your virtual assistant. Whereas if you're a company, it doesn't you have, don't have that same voice, so it's not as big of a deal as if someone just asked a question about one of your products or something to have anyone answer. Yeah. Well, I know that Tiffany's got such a great voice when she caught Nobody could be Tiffany. That I know. <laughs> no, they probably wouldn't want to be me either, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm a little quirky. I love it. We love quirky. <laughs> So let me ask the big question that you know all of us bloggers need to figure out an answer is budget. Like yeah. how does, how much does a virtual assistant cost, and how does how does let's talk money? Okay. So what I found is, as I mentioned earlier, you can either hire hire a direct virtual assistant or you can hire through a company. Um, and then if you hire, I always recommend the direct virtual assistant because you get to build a relationship with them and you don't have to go through a company's bureaucracy. However, that does work for some people, especially a lot of companies. But if we're focusing on a specific virtual assistant and you want to hire one person, I've kind of seen the budgeting or the payments work out two different ways. So either you can um, start by buying a package. They have package deals of you buy this many hours and it's this much money. And then they will work for you as you send tasks and they'll just let you know when you're getting low on hours and you need to buy hours again. And the more hours you buy generally at one time, you get a discounted rate. Some other virtual assistants like myself, I just work on an hour by hour basis. So someone emails me and wants me to do a task, I keep track of my hours and then I will bill at the very end. Normally I bill every two weeks, especially if it's a client that keeps coming back. Um, price ranges kind of vary a lot. What I've seen is for most individual virtual assistants that are working, probably somewhere between 17 and 25 tends to be a fairly um, common range per hour and normally if you're b billing per hour um, it's broken down into 15 minute intervals. I'm trying okay, to do math really on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> that's really interesting how they break down the rates and stuff but I was wondering when you're searching for a virtual assistant what type of skills do you want them to have? Like I know I'm, I'm sure it's not like a I don't know, do you interview for a virtual assistant or you just ask them to list like maybe websites they've worked for and what their skill set is? How do you go about that process? Yeah, I think it kind of depends exactly what you're looking for. So I would say a virtual assistant should have their own website that kind of features what services they do have and what their specialty is because everyone has their own specialty. And then you can set up interviews because I know I've been interviewed before over Google Hangout where you just kind of get to know them and make sure you're going to be a good mesh because you're going to be working with them probably a lot. So you want to make sure your personalities get along well and you're both on the same page. Mm -hmm. um, but some clients I've just started right off the bat with, just started working um, with them. And I think they had just seen my website and liked the services that were offered and didn't really care because we didn't do a lot of whole communication. It was just through email. Okay. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. And the other question I have, what if, okay, I'm a blogger and I see myself as being really organized. How do I go about becoming a virtual assistant? Like, is it something I need to change my entire site for, just add like a tab saying I also offer, offer these services, or maybe do something like you said, create a website dedicated to that alone. Yeah, that's a really good question. I think if you wanted to create your own website, you could, or just mine is um, on the same site. I just have a tab that says virtual assistant services. Um, okay. And then marketing yourself as that. So whether you're on Twitter and you just tweet out with the hashtag virtual assistant, I know people will search just that hashtag to see what comes up, or I know there's some websites you can um, register under. I know something also for virtual assistants that are helping bloggers, a lot will call themselves blogging helpers or blog assistants. So there's okay. some um, directories that you can register with that are free that are like blog assistant directories so people can look through those. 
That's really cool. And do you suggest, like, if I'm looking to become that or if there's someone out there who's watching right now who's like, hey, I've been thinking about being a virtual assistant, do you suggest some skill sets that they try to focus on improving on? I mean, obviously, organization is going to be a major thing and knowledge of social media and stuff. But is there anything else that you think they should try to learn a little bit more about before they go there? I would say in general, so all of my clients and myself personally are all on WordPress and I think a lot of bloggers are. I know there's, you know, other ones and Squarespace and things, but a lot of people in general tend to be on WordPress. So if you want to just focus on WordPress and know plugins and know how to update things and know how to write the posts or commenting, I think it's a really good skill set to have if you don't already have it um, because it can really benefit your clients. And the other one would be SEO, just understanding what that is. That's something I had to learn when I was like beginning blogging, knowing what it is, how it can benefit your client, and exactly how to use it. Hey, we have a blogging 411 episode on that, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> shameless plug there, Allison. No, it, wasn't, it wasn't even shameless. <laughs> that was blatant. <laughs> like, um, click I'm, below right now. <laughs> I will say that one of the things as somebody who just hired a virtual assistant, the biggest thing that I value is just communication. And Sarah is so quick to respond to my five emails a day. <laughs> Even if it's an email that just says, got it, can't get to it right now, or we'll take care of it this evening. But she's so quick to respond. And I think that for virtual assistants, that's something you have to consider if you want to be a virtual assistant, I would think. Like, you have to be prepared to be responsive and to be on your computer a lot. And I know that that sounds kind of like a duh thing to say, but I talk to a lot of people who want to be social media managers, too, and it's like, well, you have to be prepared to be in there, on it, in your social media, like, all the time and responsive and stuff. So um, that's kind of a lifestyle thing, but I think that it could work out really well if you love to do that anyway so yeah um, I will I do want to talk really quick about <laughs> okay say so, say you hire a virtual assistant and it's not going well mm -hmm. like you're feeling the blogger who has a virtual assistant to kind of guide that process back to the right track. Can you ask that question again, Allison? I think you kind of froze. Did I? Oh, yeah. freeze frame. Just kind of if you how do you get to the to a good track if you are working with a virtual assistant and it doesn't seem to be going well? What can you kind of do to smooth out that the process? and find a way to make sure that you and your virtual assistant are on the same page. Yeah. Um, as you were mentioning, communication is key. So understanding how each of you communicate best, whether it's through email, whether it's through texting, whether it's through something like a Google Hangout or Skype, um, figuring that out almost immediately to me is key. Um, because different people communicate different ways and it's easier to get in contact with them in different ways. Um, and then figuring out the best way for you to assign tasks. So for me personally, I don't mind. I always I have my email on my phone. I check it almost all the time and I'll respond. But some virtual assistants might not want to do that and might want to do it only on their computer. So I think setting up um, expectations right away is very helpful. But if you get yourself into a situation where you don't think it's going as well as it could be, I think sitting down, especially because virtual assistants, you're, you're not normally meeting people in person, um, sitting down and actually having some kind of face-to-face, -face, whether it's a Google Hangout or a Skype, can really be beneficial to just kind of hash out a lot of what you're expecting, what I'm expecting, because a lot of times what I feel like other people have told me is it's just communication, like I'm not understanding what you want me to do or you're not understanding what I'm wanting to do. Um, and then sometimes it probably just doesn't work out because there's a personality difference or there's a skill set I thought you had and you don't really and I'm looking for something else and that's okay too. Interesting. Yeah. I think that, um, oh, I had a brilliant thought and I just lost it, but it was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> It was that awesome that it couldn't even stay in one place. <laughs> I know, I know, yeah. I know that one of the things that I will say that I think 
people need to understand is if you hire a virtual assistant, you have to empower them and trust them to do what you're asking them to do. I mean, you picked your virtual assistant and you hired your virtual assistant because they're the right fit for you and you believe in them. And I know your blog is your baby. And I know that you've worked hard to build your blog. But if you're going to hire a virtual assistant and trust them, you've got to let go a little bit, right? And that. Exactly. You that can't can micromanage because that can be really. Like, <laughs> that'll be a problem in itself if you try to take. Well, did you do it? Okay, did you do it? Okay, I think you should have did it by now. <laughs> and the person is probably like, oh my gosh, just let me do it. That, and I would have hashtagged it this way. Well, okay, <laughs> but you're not doing it, and you hired the person to do it the way that you trust them to do it. So Exactly. And I also think, too, that virtual assistants can bring another level of education and a new look at your blog and your business than you might have. Like, they're coming at it from an outsider's perspective, and they may be able to see things that you're not doing or optimizing that you could and allow them to help you figure that out, too. And I think that that's a huge thing for people to, to understand. Um, I know for... With uh, working with Sarah, we actually got the co-schedule a plug-in on our WordPress blog because it made it so much easier for her to be in there and helping us schedule our posts and schedule our social media. And that was kind of taking that investment to empower the people that we have on our team to do what they do best. Yeah, and talking about trusting your virtual assistant, one thing I strongly believe in and strongly recommend for my clients is if you want to hire a virtual assistant, I say do a trial period. Do whether it's a week or two weeks and you assign me some tasks that you think you I you want me to do. I go and do them and you see whether or not that's kind of done how you not even necessarily how you would have done it, but how you like and you think it's gonna be successful and how your personalities match because then both of you are on the same page of this is a trial, if it doesn't work out, one of us can back away. That's a really great idea. I never would have thought of that, especially for like you hear a trial periods for like, you know, uh app or something like that, but for a person, I don't think I would have thought of that, but that's a really great idea, Sarah. Yeah, thanks. I know a lot of bloggers have a hard time getting over, and for my personal blog, like my, my hobby blog where I drive my freelance writing out of, I have a hard time getting over that hump of, do I want to pay somebody when it's mm -hmm. a blog, and I'm already sinking costs into hosting and that sort of thing, but at the end of the day, and I think it comes down to everything related to blogging, you're going to get out of it what you put into it. So yeah. if you hire a virtual assistant at a rate that you can swallow, it should free up your time to go get those sponsorships, to drive more page views, to get advertisements, to stick in affiliate links, to get your shop going, get your Etsy stuff updated. And, and it, the idea is that your investment in your virtual assistant is going to be here, but the amount of time that you have left you're going to earn this much money because you have time to really focus on what matters. And that might not be your blog, right? It might not be where you are with your blog. You might not be monetizing. You might not be at the point where you're making any money off of it or maybe you don't want to. Um, and in which case, then this probably isn't the right fit for you. But I know, you know, for the Blogger Network, we've got membership that we need to make sure our members are happy. We're planning events and educational components. We're constantly redesigning, coming up with proprietary blog post like we need help with that stuff so that we can do the big things that we've got our eye on so I think it really depends on your blog and your blog fit yeah. businesses for sure though yes. <laughs> if you are a business <laughs> and you are blogging definitely check it out um, all right, so I think that answers all of my questions right away. Does anybody else have any other questions or anything else about virtual assistants that people should know? Nope, I think I asked everything I had interested in. <laughs> I'm one of those micromanager type bloggers, so I know when I get to that level, the person is definitely going to have to be like sent from above <laughs> to deal with me. <laughs> <laughs> but this is all great information, and I definitely got the answers I needed for what I asked. And thank you so much, Sarah, because you were very clear, and you definitely told me and showed me what a virtual assistant can be. Thank you. 
Yeah, and I would say that if you are watching and you are interested in Sarah's services, of course, check out her website. You can also email her questions. I'm sure she'll be happy to answer them. Also, feel free on our Google Hangout and also on our YouTube stream, ask questions there and we'll respond. If you don't want to send an email or you think it's a question that other people should have an answer to, post it and we'll respond. And as far as moving forward, our next Blogging 411 episode is actually going to be about blogging for the healthcare professional, which I know is a little different than what we've done in the past. We've kind of stuck to a lot of stuff that hobbyist bloggers can do to take their blog to the next level or design, but this is a really interesting topic and we have a great guest who has grown his business so much just from blogging um, and so we're so anxious to pick his brain and learn more and then we have some other very exciting blogging 411 episodes coming up so happy new year welcome to Tiffany and we <laughs> look so forward to seeing you all coming up if you have any ideas for us shoot them our way thanks guys